the regions that uh, Scotch whisky come from, and there's, we tend to classify six uh, regions as uh, illustrated here, we can put too much emphasis on the differences between regions, but there are stylistic uh, differences between them. Um, the most famous one being Speyside, which contains most malt whisky uh, distilleries. Um, and that came about uh, for a number of reasons. Uh, first of all, it produces really good whisky. It has a really good water supply, but also it has it came very good communications um, when the railways were built to the central markets, which at that time were in the central belt. It also was able to communicate up um, by steam puffer up into Shetland and some of the other uh, highland areas so it had a good supply of peat used to come into uh, Inverness. So for all those reasons uh, Speyside became the dominant uh, area region for, grow for making malt whisky. In behind that we have the Highlands area, much larger area, but contains fewer distilleries and is more famous um, for in-your-face type malt whiskies rather than smooth integrated ones that we see in, uh, in Speyside. They suffer from, uh, and to this day still suffer from, being able to get their product into the bottling halls and from there into the wider market. Um, lowland whiskies are famous for being lighter whiskies. They uh, had the advantage, of course, of being close to the barley fields, and so they could get a good supply of uh, malt. Once again, they suffered from, uh, particularly in uh, the western areas of the lowlands, from poor communications, poor roads and poor railways. And it really was the uh, transport system that uh, uh, governed where distilleries were successful or not um, within the lowlands. Famously, Campbelltown um, had a lot of distilleries at one, one time and they have gradually moved away but still make very fine whiskies. and a lot of people look at could we make, build a distillery in Campbelltown and uh, as the map illustrates it's on a long peninsula and that's the problem. Getting uh, material in, getting material out is very difficult, particularly getting out uh, waste material and by that I mean the draft that's left over after distilling. On the islands, um, the most famous one, of course, is Isla, and we're all familiar with the very peated uh, whiskies that they make. There's a source, a ready source of peat on Isla, both for tr traditionally for heating the uh, distilleries um, as a source of fuel, as well as obviously for flavouring uh, the whisky. The rest of the islands um, really at one time had very few distilleries on just for that transport uh, reason I, I was talking about, getting fuel out, getting whisky back to the markets. But uh, of lately, more and more distilleries have been built there with, during the latest expansion of whiskies, of, of, of distilleries, and out in Orkney. And they have, have that rougher, more maritime note uh, within them, often based on Isle of whiskies, which are famous for that very heavy peated, peated notes. Understanding these different re regions is an understanding into the history of uh, whisky manufacture within uh, Scotland and also the, how the different styles of uh, malt whisky in particular developed. Um, the different areas give a different style. That style is based on, uh, on the distilling recipe that was developed in that, area, in that area by the local distillers and is still there to this, to this day. You could make an Isle of Whisky in Speyside and vice versa. But the, but the skills, the materials, the pot stills in the different regions are designed for those different styles that we're familiar with.